think I died and went to heaven. We are at the Madras Crocodile Bank, a center for herpetology on the east coast of India. Today I get the chance to handle a rat snake, but I flinch. Like a little bitch. You will also see an Indian guy dance. There you go. Enjoy. You're watching a fin and fauna. Welcome. Hi, I'm Ram Whitaker. Welcome to the Madras Crocodile Bank. Today is a very special day here. It's Pongal, our biggest holiday in Tamil Nadu. There are going to be thousands of visitors here today seeing the crocs. Around 400,000 people visit this premises every year. Ram is the co-founder of the Croc Bank and has made his career in conservation and wildlife filmmaking, even winning an Emmy for one of his documentaries about the King Cobra. In the early 1970s, uh, we found that crocodiles were going extinct in India. I did surveys actually almost throughout the entire country and it seemed like something had to be done really fast. So we uh, started collecting a few crocodiles together and overnight they started breeding. Uh, this was kind of a surprise to us but uh, we had been in touch with people in Africa and the United States who were very, very experienced crocodile breeders. So we knew we were doing the right thing somehow, by accident. Having realized that they breed so easily in captivity, we started out with 12 crocodiles and now we sort of ended up with about 2,000 crocodiles. So, uh, and a lot of them have been released. We've released almost 1,500 crocodiles in different parts of the country to restock wild habitats. But we, my uh, ex-wife Zai and myself had to figure out another way to do this properly and that means that we had to buy land we had to set up what we call the madras crocodile bank that means it became a gene bank for crocodiles and that's how this was created so this place didn't quite start with the guests in mind but conservation and they have done a lot the assistant curator of the croc bank who soon became a friend has promised to introduce me to some of these reptiles my name is Ajay Karthik and I'm the assistant curator at the Madras Crocodile Bank. Ajay needed to examine a few rescued snakes. Some of them happen to be Indian rat snakes. One big rat snake. Oh, there's another one. I'll get her, I'll get her. Just hang on to this one for a second. Oh, she's gone. I'll get her, I'll get her. The thing is, once they're in your hand, they don't bite so much. But they tend to get bitey once they've found, uh, you know, leverage like that. Yeah. Once they've found something to hide behind. Me too. Hold on. Luckily, these are big snakes, because the smaller species could just go inside a crack in the wall and would never come out. RJ is a professional in handling and working with snakes. Myself, however... At least the rat snakes kind of gave me a headache. These guys are pretty dimorphic sexually, much like king cobras, so males get a lot larger than females. Mm. Our female's only about half this size and she laid 22 eggs this year. Yeah, we hatch the eggs out, but what we do with the babies is just release them in, onto our own uh, property. This wild rat snake may be one of those released babies. Sadly though, they are very often killed because they are mistaken for a cobra. Here is another non-venomous snake. This is a certain species of sand boa, and there is a reason why it kind of looks like a worm. They use that blunt tail, you can see right there. They use it as a defense. When a predator attacks, they will coil up and show that tail, which looks like a head, and they hope that the predator will go for the head, which is actually the tail. It gives them some time to run away. It's a beautiful, beautiful animal. This said species is called the Whitaker sand boa named after Ram. Next week, we get to meet some crocs as we learn about some of the most endangered reptiles on the planet. Welcome back then. Remember to comment and subscribe. 
This was a Fin and Fauna.